Twas long ago that the tales do tell of a foul gravedigger named Gabriel. In a quaint little town not unlike our own, an evil presence did follow while he wandered alone. He was quite content, just the bottle in him, which others considered to be awfully grim. He lived in a house on the outside of town, and found it quite pleasant with no one around. He would wait all day long for the day's last light, and cloaked by the darkness, would dig graves through the night. Laying in bed to raise his spirits before he dozed off, he thought of measles, scarlet fever, and the dreaded whooping cough. Some say he was mad, but he lived a haunted life, plagued by the spirit of Penelope, his late wife. The light in his heart continued to fail, and in the absence of light, darkness prevails. Good day to you, kind sir. How are you on this fine afternoon? What do you want? Well, I'm here to talk to you about your wife. My wife? The last time I checked, she was dead. Oh, I, I realize that. I just figured that with her recent passing, you might need someone to talk to. Do I look like I need someone to talk to? Well, I see you go to the graveyard every night, all alone, and I figure you don't have anyone else who might be some comfort to you. Oh, and you figured you might be? I figured I could bring some God into your life. God! <laughs> God, eh? That just sounds great, doesn't it? <laughs> hey, have you got Jesus with you there, Churchy? Well, come on in. Come on in. That would be just great. We can make. I got water in there. We can make it into wine. Let's have a party. I think you've misunderstood. He can't make any water into wine. He, he can. He no, no, no. We had a deal, Churchy. Last time you were here, you promised me you'd bring Jesus into my house, and we turn that water into wine. You lied to me. If, if, if I could just give you this. I don't want it. Now I'm going to give you this.
dead and all gone. But still, binders linger on. Brave lodgings for one. Brave lodgings for one. A few feet of cold earth when life is done. A stone at the head and a stone at the feet. Brave lodgings for one on these holy grounds. Gentlemen have ever seen me before. Oh, yes, they have. We, we know, know the man, man the sulky face and grim scowl. We, we know, know the man who in life could not love his wife. And in her death, holds her even more contentment than leaving him alone. We know him. We know him. <laughs>
veo? ¿Qué veo? Show the man of misery and gloom a few pictures from our own great storehouse. I have some bad news. Well then, let's have it. She's not going to live. The fever is weak in her heart, enough so that she won't last a month. Aren't you hearing what I'm saying to you? Your wife is dying! Thank you, Doctor. best work, sir. Wouldn't you agree? I, I actually quite enjoyed that. A little. You miserable man! <laughs> you are a miserable man who mistreated and manipulated a woman <laughs> who only wanted to love you. You used her love for you to gain our family's fortune. You sat there and watched as she died all alone in your bed. All the while more concerned about what riches you'd receive when she died. What sort of man does this? It still feels no remorse. Feels nothing. I'll tell you what kind of a man. A man whose heart is as cold as the bodies he makes graves for night after night. A man who cares more about earthly possessions than the feelings of others around him. A man whose soul is so evil that he deserves no mercy. And for how he has lived his life, we will afford him all the torment he can spare for the rest of his miserable days.
The sun rose red on the morning after. The town was full of joy and laughter. Gabriel Grubb was never seen again, almost as if he had never been. It has always been said from the very start, Gabriel Grubb's darkness came straight from his heart. Although it is a tale, be sure to take heed. Dark forces are attracted to sinister deeds. <laughs>